Hello, welcome to the Mac Minute. This week we're gonna cover iPhoto. It is the free photo app that comes with every new Mac. And even if you have an older Mac, you can still purchase it in the iHome package from Apple, and it's very inexpensive. But it's a, it's a great way to start doing photos uh, if you're not a f professional photographer. And I wanna to talk to you a little bit about that. And now the iPhoto down here is on your dock, and it's right here and you click on it, and I don't have any photos in here, so we're gonna be starting this from scratch. So you're gonna see how you would see it uh, when you first get it. So let me look up photo locations. Would you like to see a photos on a map? Well, I'm gonna say yes, um, but the photos I'm going to use, they do not have GPS coordinates in it. So right, I'm gonna drag this kind of out of the way, like this. So I'm not a talking shoulder to you, just like that. So there's a couple ways you can do get photos into here. Now I have no photos in here and I've dragged some photos off of my, my Mac server and they're right here. And they're of some Blue Angels that I took back in 2009. So these would be a great uh, nobody in particular type of thing to import. So there's a couple ways you can do it. I could simply just take and drag this whole document in just like this and let go of it. That's the nice thing about a Mac. It's very drag and drop. But the other things you can do is you can come up to file and you can do um, import, which is right, where'd it go? Oh. The other thing you can do is go up to file. So let me select iPhoto and you go to file and you see import to library. And that will allow you to import. So that's on my desktop. And then there's the folder and there's all the photos just like that. So that's another way you can do it. Now, if you have it on a camera already, well, as soon as you connect your camera, it's gonna to wanna to import and it's gonna ask you that. But in the case that it doesn't, there is an option. I'm not gonna see it because I'm not connected. I do not see the option, but there's an option in here to import from your camera when you plug it in. And I don't see that because I don't have a camera plugged in at the moment. But all I'm going to do is just simply drag and drop it in just like so. And you see it bringing in photos and you can see there's a lot of them, 600 and well, 600 and some. Um, it's gonna take it a minute or so to get all these in. And through the magic of editing, they've been imported. So I saved you a little bit of time there. So now what you see is that the photos have been imported right here. And I can come down here and I can uh, double click on any of them, just like so. This is actually a very distant one. So uh, here's one's a little closer. Not a very good one, actually. There's some a little bit better. But you can see you can come in and edit them just like that. And now if you want to actually make changes to them, there's an option down here that says edit. And when you do that, you can do all kinds of things. You can do rotate, you can enhance them, which is an automatic enhancement. We will undo that. And then you can also undo that. Fix red eye if there's red eye in the picture. You can straighten it if it's not taken straight. You can crop it and you can also retouch. So you have to tell it the uh, size of the blemish and stuff like that you want to do as well. So um, you can also get info, which will tell you a little bit about like the camera it was used. This one was taken with my 5D Mark II and tells you what lens I was using, et cetera. So that's all detail that's in here like so. And if you have a GPS in the cam in your camera, which I do not have it in my, Mark in my 5D, that uh, you can, it'll show you on the map and you can also manually assign a place by putting in an address or a city or something like that as well. And you also, if it detects any faces, it will come up here. And we'll talk about face detection here shortly, because I do have some pictures in the back. Hopefully they don't mind me using their image, but of people that have, um, can show you face detection as well. So let me go ahead and get out of the information. And let's go back to the main picture, or the main import. Now you see down here at the bottom, you can actually do how big one of these pictures to be, just like that. You can turn it into a slideshow. And if you, after you go through and you edit all your pictures, if you want to create a calendar, for example, there's this little create button right here and you can click on it and you can say, I want to create a calendar or I want to create a photo book. You can do all that stuff right from inside iTunes. They make it and they ship it to you and their quality of their output is, is really good. They make really good stuff. So on the left hand side over here, you see your last import, which is where I am now. But one thing you will notice is I don't have any um, libraries over here. So what I want to do is I want to highlight all of these. I'm going to use Command A. You can also do this by going to Edit and Select All. Right now I've selected none, so select 
all, does the same thing. And then I want to add to down here at the bottom right. And I'm gonna put them into an album. So I say album, and I'm going to say it's a new album. And you see it creates right here, Blue Angels. I'm going to type in Blue Angels, because that's what it is. So now I have an album of the Blue Angels. But the other thing it did is if you come up here to events, it actually created an event for this date. So you see down here, it tells you it was May 19, 2009. That's when I took these pictures. And it created an event. As you add more pictures, it'll keep adding in events all by itself. And it determines that based on date. Now there's some options you can set up inside of your preferences to determine how many days are in an event or does one, is everything in one day at one event, things like that. And it's easy if you open up an event, if you wanna split things, let's say I wanna split these six into their uh, own event and you go to the events menu and you say split event. So what this is going to do is it now created two separate events. So Blue Angels 2009 edited is an event and now my other one is untitled, which I can now change this to whatever I wanted to. Now in the case that they really are the same event, so you have them over an event over two days, you can come back here and highlight both of these and go to events and you can do merge events just like this. It'll confirm that you want to do this because it cannot be undone. And there we go and we see we have all our pictures back in that same single event. So events are things like a wedding and you may have in the same day a wedding and a reception and you may want to put them in a separate events. So you can split your events or you may have a camping trip and you want to put it all into one event or a vacation all into one event and instead of multiple days being separated events. So it's very flexible into how you want to do that. Now the other thing, um, if you click on one of these pictures, let me find a, a decent one. That's a decent one. I want to say I want to make this my key photo. So this is the photo people are, are going to see or you're going to see mainly uh, when you look at this album or event. So you can look back to event and see there's my key photo now. That's just how you can pick what you, what you want up there. So that's events. Photos are basically the list of all your photos. You will find all of your photos in photos. Then you go to faces, and we're gonna talk a little bit about faces. It's, you can see right here, it's finding people. Hopefully, Rich doesn't mind me having him on the screen, but uh, it picks their faces out. So it's asking who is this and who is this? So I could type in the person's name. And as you, the more you do this through iPhoto, the smarter it gets. So it'll start determining who people are. And when that happens, you can then go into faces and say, I wanna see all the pictures of this person, and it'll find it everywhere they're in a photo. And it's very intelligent. It's very great, it's, it's really good. Now the next one is places, and since I don't know, have any GPS coordinates in these photos, it's not gonna be able to show you anything in here, but I can explain to you a little bit what it does. It basically, using newer cameras that take GPS coordinates or a cell phone, iPhones or anything like that will take the GPS coordinates, assuming you have location services turned on, and store in the photo where the picture came from. And this will allow you to say, I wanna see all the pictures I took once in San Francisco, and it'll bring up San Francisco. And it's just a way of visually seeing where the picture was taken. You have to be careful if you're a privacy person because uh, it, if you send the photo out with that information in it, they can see where you took it. Now, if it's a vacation or something like that, it probably doesn't matter, but you probably don't want your kids out there taking photos with their phones and so like that, getting to their friends where they live. So it's just something, a whole different subject, but something to keep in the back of your mind. So that's what I want to cover today with iPhoto. Um, a lot more than my one minute, I know, but uh, iPhoto is a lot is a lot in iPhoto, and the more you play with it, the easier it gets. So I hope you enjoy iPhoto, and if you're photography and love taking pictures, this is like the cool tool. Uh, it allows you to share things real easy with everybody. I didn't even go through all the sharing options in there. Just best thing to do is play with it. The more you play with it, the more you can get in there. But don't be afraid of it either. It's real easy to to navigate. That's it for MacMint this week. We'll see you next week. For show notes for this show, contacts, and more, go to the techzen.tv website where you can get show notes for all of our shows. We love to hear from our viewers and listeners. We have an email, a Twitter, and a phone number where you can contact us for each show. For details, visit the techzen.tv website and get the show details. You can also make a video and upload it somewhere like YouTube or Vimeo and then just send us a link. You never know, you may see your video in a future show. You can get all of our shows delivered automatically to your favorite device by going to your favorite podcast website like iTunes and subscribing. Each of our shows also has a YouTube channel you can subscribe to to get regular updates. Our shows are also available on most internet radio networks like Stitcher and TuneIn Radio. 
You can also watch and listen to our shows on Xbox, TiVo, and Roku. You can even find us on your Zoom.